time for the great one, the YouTube people champ, to do another reaction, baby. Oh, last night, did we have the segment of the year? Trash talking between The Miz and L.A. Knight. Yeah. We got to check this segment out. I J-Rock has come back to you too. What is happening in in and in with the millions? And millions of J-Rock fans from all over the world. That's right, baby. J-Rock is here last night on Monday Night Raw. We got an opportunity to see The Miz and L.A. Knight. Yeah. Go head to head, nose to nose. But not in a fight or a match. But on that microphone, you know, The Miz is, J-Rock says, is relatively underrated on the mic. He's damn good. But it's L.A. night. Yeah. That we're talking about now. And so, last night, they got, uh, dare I say, personal, so to speak. Right? So, these two went nose to nose. We're going to check this thing out. Now, for copyright purposes, j ain't trying to get no strike or get blocked. I'm not going to be able to show the actual video. All we'll be able to do is listen to the audio from uh, the segment. All right. So we're going to start it right here where L.A. Knight's in the ring. That way you don't hear his music and you get a copyright claim and everything else. But j Rock says this. If you're enjoying the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, that like button. Let j Rock know you're feeling the content. All right. On our way to 3,000 subscribers. Let's get this thing, baby. Yeah! Showtime. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. I thought that we got a great introduction in the Battle Royal at SummerSlam. But if that didn't work for you, allow me to introduce myself with everybody saying... No. You don't deserve to shake my hand. You don't think I've seen superstars like you come in here, come into WWE, try to ride my coattails? See, the way I see it is like this. You take away the Miz, and what you take away from me, you take away my success, my fame, my money. You strip away my hot wife. You strip away every ounce of charisma that I have. And what do you get? L.A. Knight. Wow. You are a flash in the pan. You are a flavor of the month. Now, don't get me wrong. All these people right here love you right now, and they'll probably love you for the next five months. They'll buy your t-shirts because they think you're it. Yeah. But you know what I think? I think you're just an Attitude Era fanboy playing Ooh. cosplay in my ring. He went there. He went there. All right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so so no handshake. Ta. Let me let me be honest. I don't have a problem with you, but trust me when I say you do not want to make this personal. Personal. You, you want to talk personal? It's been personal. I take my career very, very personal. I've taken it personal for 20 years. I took it personal when I first got here. and People said I'd be fired within three months. I took it personal when I was kicked out of the locker room. I still take it personal to this day, even though I have made a bet at WrestleMania. I am a two-time Grand Slam champion. I have made myself indestructible to anyone in that locker room. Anything they give me out here for 20 years. Years, what have you done for the past 20 years?
so personal it is. Let's go. Let's what have go. I been doing for the last 20 years? That's a great question. You know what I've been doing? I've been making myself a dangerous man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What does that mean? I'll tell you what that means. I've been clawing, scratching, doing everything I needed to do. On the outside, looking in, while this place bet on all the wrong horses, you being one of them. Yeah. Meanwhile, this thoroughbred is on the outside, running a parallel path, albeit a little more rocky, just waiting for the right opening. And here you are with a 20-year head start. And you know why you got that 20-year head start? You got that 20-year head start because you're safe. Hmm. You know what that means? They knew that when you came in here, they could smack you around. They could kick you out of the locker room. And what did you do? You took it. Hmm. Yeah. The line on me has always been, we're not ready to take the chance on you yet. You know why? Because I'm a dangerous man. They knew that if I came in here, you want to smack me around? You want to kick me out of the locker room? No, no! Pop it in, take no mess! <laughs> I'm not to be messed with. That's the difference between me and you. But with all that said, still, you became every single champion you could here, and you did it many times over, and good on you. I haven't been there yet. But here I am on the climb, and your toilet's in, uh, your, your career's in the damn toilet. Mm. But, I'll tell you what. Can't miss. Look at that, you gained a couple, good job. I tell you what, if you want to make this personal now that you have, I don't mind making you a stepping stone. Stepping stone? Stepping stone? Don't get hot. I ain't talking about your little stepping stones down there. I'm talking about me walking over you to the main event where I belong. I am the main event. I am the main event. And you are not on my level. That's a really interesting theory that I'm not on your level because strangely enough, I'm looking you dead in your eyes right now. So if you think I'm not on your level, why don't you prove me wrong? I ain't going anywhere. Mm. J-Rock says this, he's gonna stop it right there, but uh, they just fight, you know, Miz hits it from behind and then, uh, L.A. Knight comes back, hit him with the BFT, blunt force trauma, laying the smack down on the Miz. I think that this is a good feud for uh, L.A. Knight. J-Rock was one of the few people, and J-Rock means one of the few people who believe that when L.A. Knight was in this feud with Bray Wyatt, he was overshadowing Bray. Like, his promos, his energy, his charisma was just overshadowing Bray Wyatt. Now, now I'm not saying that, that you know, that's kind of hard to do, because Bray Wyatt was just coming back and he had all this momentum from, you know, his return. And that was his first, you know, you know, I guess matchup, whatever you want to call it, since coming back to the WWE. But LA Knight, man, that charisma, the uh, his mic skills, you know, because he'd been in the business, what, since 2002, something like that. He's been in the business for a long time. And so he's not new to this. All right. The fact of the matter is, is that I think he overshadowed Bray Wyatt, not by a mile, but enough to where you say, damn, he ain't supposed to be the one shining like a star in this situation. All right. And J-Rock don't know what they're going to do with Bray Wyatt when he comes back. All right. His Fiend character was working like a charm. They messed around. What they did was they put the title on him way too soon. Okay. They put it on him way too soon. And then he loses to Goldberg, which that should have never happened, all right? Goldberg should not have had that title, at least not from the, the Fiend. I mean, if you want to have a match with him, that's one thing, but don't take the title off of him. Like, Anyway, 
All right. The fact of the matter is, is that L.A. Knight is here. All right. And they fumbled with him so far from this regard. They put him in that Intercontinental title fatal four-way match on SmackDown. Theory, <laughs> this is what made no sense. Theory pulls out Rey Mysterio. When, if you don't want LA Knight to win, okay, fine. But have Theory screw Knight. Not Rey, because Rey ended up winning the match anyway. It should have been Knight that they pulled out. Maybe that was the plan and they got botched, I don't know. But J-Rock says Knight should have been the one who was pulled out and screwed by Theory. All right, because it would have then given the notion Austin is scared of theory. L.A. Knight keeps getting screwed. That would have gotten people behind him even more. All right, because people can relate to feeling like they've been screwed out of things. And so that would have put them L.A. Knight smack dab right in that spot to where he was being screwed out of the Intercontinental title. I don't know what the hell the purpose of that battle royal at, at SummerSlam was for. That was just a waste of people's time. They could have put Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus in the, on that damn spot. All right. J-Rock says this. They could have put Shayna Baszler and Ronda Rousey on Raw. Because that match just just shouldn't have been on SummerSlam. Or it, hey, put it on the, the, the pre-show. Not on not on the actual event. J-Rock says this. LA Knight is coming. This was a damn good segment. I look to see look to uh, more from him and the Miz, what they got cooking up. All right, this is going to be a good feud between the two of them. J-Rock can't wait. All right, now, your turn. You let J-Rock know what you thought of this uh, this segment, if you will. Post your comments down below. Let J-Rock know what you thought of his reaction to this video. No rhyme intended on that line. If you enjoyed the great one's reaction, that like button, subscribe, and share. Make sure you hit that bell so you can be notified when it is time to electrify. Thank you for joining Jay Rock. Stay tuned for my next video. Mamba, GG, and Wakanda forever. Here you smile. La, 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 yeah. La, la, la. What Jay Rock is.